Hi, this is Joseph. Um, today I want to talk about Riot.js and how I'm using this to kind of shape some of the things I do. Um, and, and the best to explain Riot.js is kind of just take uh, what it already offers to you when you first go to the page, which is it's basically just custom tags. You know, you have your, your anchor tag, your A tag, or your paragraph tag, or your P tag, and and so on. You can have your own tag, and you can have sp um, specific attributes assi assigned to it. So you can say, like, I'm going to make this uh, this tag. If the name is assigned to it, then I'm going to take that name and put it inside some extra HTML that's inside of my custom tag. And this isn't new technology. This is basically called Web Components. And the idea of Web Components is to build reusable components. So if you have something like um, a label with an input and an error underneath it and it's consistent and you reuse it all the time then you can have all the styling, all this JavaScript and all the markup attached to that um, isolate into a single component and reuse that as many times as you want and so what, what Riot provides is not really anything different than something like React or Vue or Angular or Ember or Aurelia um, or even something like, like Knockout a little bit of that um, but the, the the way it approaches it I think is is really um, revealing to myself as, as far as how I like to interact with libraries and that is it's one thing to have a, a dependency on it but it's another when it gets in your way when you're struggling to do something and you don't know how to do it because you have to do it that framework way or that library way and and so I'm not coming out of the premise of saying that RiotJS should be uh, used for everything in the sun as far as it goes of making interactive web applications or even web pages but it's something to think about and so I'll be having a series of tutorials or screencasts coming up that'll teach you how to use Riot, how to get started um, and then interacting with it in day-to-day -day operations like making a custom drop-down or doing like I said the the label input field validation stuff and and, and so on and so the first thing I want to kind of uh, show you guys is um, how it kind of puts itself against something like uh, React. And that is the way that React is defined is you use the JX, JSX um, definition, which is you're, you're kind of having this mix between JavaScript and HTML. And so the way I see right and the, the best explain um, way I can see it is that it's the, it's it's taking what React does, but inverting it. Um, so it the way that you see um, JSX is the compiled version of Riot. So let me give you an example. They have here the to do, and they have uh, some JavaScript intertwined into it. So it's kind of like the opposite. Rather than using JavaScript with HTML inside of it, they're just using HTML with JavaScript inside. And you don't have to do this type of definition. There's there's a couple of other ways I'll show you, but effectively it gets compiled down to something like this, where you have all the HTML compiled down to a string, and then all your function and methods and everything else is just regular JavaScript that's thrown thrown inside of of this of this function of this tag that they call it. Um, so that's that's where that's coming from but you don't have to have it compiled down it'll compile it when you want to mount they call it mounting the the, the tag or the component and um, so the way I the why the reason why I like this so much is that it like I said it really gets out of your way and you can focus on doing what you want to do so here you're seeing regular HTML and regular JavaScript with a caveat of this which is out of the box you get a little bit of ES6 uh, compatibility. This is actually ES6 function, how you define it um, when you're inside of an object. And so that's why this works. Um, so you don't have to use regular JavaScript. You don't have to use regular CSS. And there's different ways you can define that. So let me go to uh, their, their play demo and show you some more of this. So here they have... <coughs> A script and they're just defining this dot whatever and it's they're baking it into the template language that Riot provides uh, and then they're doing scoped CSS. Now you don't have to have scoped there but this is a way that you can isolate your CSS and this is where I say it starts to get out of the way. So if you're compiling this down into this type of method like you're using gulp 
um, you can still use gulp and then you can use less or you can use um, post CSS or you can use SAS. You can use any type of CSS p processor, whether it's pre or post, and the same thing with JavaScript. You don't have to use JavaScript. You can use TypeScript or LiveScript or CopyScript or ES6 with Babel support if, if you really do need it. So you're not stuck to having used regular CSS or regular JavaScript. You can go out the bounds and, and add on these extra things. Um, now, before I go any further, there are two types of way to use Riot in, in this uh, understanding. It's that there's compiled down the version that's compiled down, which is what you're looking at here, where you see like riot.tag2 and has all the HTML and CSS kind of combined together. And then you have the, the version that you normally see that you're writing, which is the non-compiled down version. And they have, they go on a premise that, okay, this is really tiny, really small. And you know, if you do compile your, your JavaScript, you can use the small version. It's it's nine kilobytes or less, basically ten kilobytes of, of JavaScript you need to add on versus your own actual JavaScript. So sure that, that claim is right, but the reality is you may not even want to compile it down that this may be too big of a step for you to even go and use. And so you end up using the the minified and compiled version, which is like twenty something um, kilobytes anyways you get less performance out of it um, but it's still still a really good way just to get started just to try it out and stuff the other thing that I, I do want to point out is that when you're dealing with these type of frameworks and libraries um, you you gain the understanding of one-way binding versus two-way binding and one-way binding is basically you send data through the components and the component updates you don't get any data out of that component and that's basically what Riot is it's it's a one-way type of data binding. You 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 don't get two ways unless you're explicitly defining it. And I mean explicit in that you're actually building the two-way binding. And for me, I kind of like that because it doesn't take that much time, and it's very obvious that it's two-way binding. That in the JavaScript itself, you can tell that if you update this, X is expect affected. Like these par other parts of the application will be affected. You don't really get that with something like knockout I mean you just, it's kind of a mixed bag of what if you update this what will happen um, and so if that's it's a benefit but also a drawback because you're not getting the two-way binding you're going to be spending more time building these two-way bindings but then you kind of you kind of understand the next step of the evolution of this which is one-way binding is actually a good thing and then most of the times you just want one-way binding anyways and then if you do want two-way binding you don't tightly couple them together. You use something like an observable or an event system, which Riot also comes with. You don't have to go out there and find an event system or pub sub system to kind of get these components to talk to each other. And they have some examples of that shown there and how to do that. But I'll be going over that in my uh, other tutorials as well to help you guys uh, learn Riot system. And so I think the first thing to pause about is to you know why why write versus all these others and like I said it really gets out of your way you can just write your regular CSS your regular JavaScript your regular HTML and all you need to learn is the template system was extremely simple I mean basically you get loops you get variables and then you get um, attribute boolean types and it has uh, some things where like if you want a class to be included you can just echo out the variable and have the variable assigned to a class or you can do a key value where the key is the class name and the value is the boolean operation of whether or not the class should or should not show and if you want to have javascript inside of these curly brackets you can just include it because it's just an expression that you're using um, the other part to this is that while it's getting out of your way you, there's not that much to learn um, you're not having to put a bunch of tooling around what you're trying to do and eventually you'll get to that point but you know i i use knockout so much for a really quick something something bigger than jquery you know where i'm not manually wiring <coughs> excuse me 
we're not manually wiring all this JavaScript functions and HTML DOM elements together. Knock out what's kind of my next go-to step before I start thinking about something bigger, like using Angular or using Ember um, to build larger applications. A lot of this stuff that I do isn't this monolithic, a massive single page application. It's just a little fact or a form that's highly interactive. It's not this entire application that I'm building. And I think Write really lends itself to that type of scenario where you're just building a small piece of your, your, your web app um, that's highly interactive and you're not having your entire web app that's highly interactive. If you do want to do something like that, then I, I do recommend something like Vue or Angular or Ember or those other bigger frameworks that provide, you know, robust routing or robust observer system or even a transition system to where you have things sliding in and out and flying around the screen. Um, but if you don't need that, then I think Riot is the next best example. And it's, it's really easy to interact with in that regard that you can use Riot with another system if you need to. So if you're in a position where you're, you're going to be growing to be using something bigger and bigger, Riot can be a starting point that you eventually evolve into another system if you want to. And it's not that hard to really migrate from something that's Riot-like into something that's Vue-like. So with that said, um, I think what I want to show you guys next um, before I end this is kind of me manipulating an example they provide to show you what I mean about their example of integrating ES6 uh, with the built-in stuff that they offer. And so I'm going to open up this. This is effectively them showing you how they separate out into a tag, and then you get to see the end effect of it. So here they're having a custom timer tag set up, and it's being pulled in from this. Now, first off, you don't actually need to have an external reference. You can just throw this inside your page if you want to. So I'm going to go ahead and just take this and uh, copy it. And then I'm going to throw this. I'm going to throw this out. No more source reference. And then I'm going to put this all in there. OK, what am I doing? OK, so it's a script. I need a little bit of. So there you go. So you don't need the SRC stuff in there. Um, you don't really need a, um, a separate file to to pull this in. You can just inside your page if you really wanted to just throw this all in there and just kind of work with it. Now I, I did show you the fact that you do have to remove the script tags, which makes it a little bit odd because now you're mixing HTML and JavaScript together, which is a little bit less obvious. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo that because that's not. Well, this one example, that's not exactly what I really want to show you, which is the fact that this is, it provides you a, some small ES6 stuff, which is basically func function declaration. And the fact that when you do that, you also, they also reference this as this. So let me change the, the tick method or function to say this dot and then actually equal a function. So it's more typical ES5 type of JavaScript that you see and now it doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work because this context is lost. You're not, you're not depending on, well, um, um, you're not depending on the, uh, the scope to actually be the correct scope. So I need to then reference, I'm sure you guys are well aware of this, but self equals this. It could be anything else you want to call, but then I reference self itself. And now I get the, uh, the updated variables on the left hand side and so it's just showing you like this is really just JavaScript it's it's adding some extra helpers on there that you want to um, the other part to that is that there's there's a certain set of functions you need to learn from right and the first one is the update so here it's saying it's calling self that update and effectively this is all wrapped into an object um, and that's why you're seeing all these things being like this dot or or self dot, it's, it's referencing itself inside of this object that gets compiled. And that was the example I showed you with the, uh, the compiled version here where you're seeing it actually wrapped inside of an object itself or the actual function object. So update, and then you have these curly brackets and you're saying time. And time is referencing the time that you specified here. So the example I want to show you here is you don't have to actually put your 
updated variables inside this update. In fact, you don't even have to think about, okay, what variables am I actually updating? You can just update them. So I'm gonna go ahead and say self.time equals plus plus self.time. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove these curly bracket braces and add my semicolon because I like that. And same thing, it still works. So it's just showing you that you don't have to, okay, what variables am I updating? Just update your variables as you need to, do whatever you want, update, and update figures out what is actually updating. You don't have to go through just that time consuming process of putting everything inside that update method. Um, and the issue that you know, I'm, I'm, you're gonna run into quickly is then, okay, well, this is one component. How do I get outside of this? Or how do I you know, initialize the start or, or stuff like that? And so I, I talked a little bit about you being able to use custom attributes. So like opt.start, I'm gonna go ahead and define I start here, so I'm gonna say start equals 10. So this will start at 10 seconds rather than zero. So that's that's me showing that, okay, well this, this attribute then goes into ops.start and I'm, I'm defining it. So it's really easy to go ahead and start to pass data into the component without getting into any JavaScripty stuff. So if you're lending this over to a designer, you, you can just document the attribute, attributes that are supported and they can just start designing their application with all the little helper web components that you've built or these extra little tags that you've built. And that's basically it. I mean, there's there's not much else to write. Like I said, there's not two-way binding, but I will show you in other tutorials on how to, how to get around that and do your own type of bindings. It's really straightforward. And, you know, I hope this is opening up to you guys to something like Riot or other systems out there that are very lightweight that are going to help you guys kind of get um, away from using something like jQuery and tightly coupling things together with like JavaScript and, and all this HTML stuff. You know, my point isn't really to sell you on, on Riot. It's to sell you on the notion of web components to get you away from the jQuery stuff. And I'm not saying using jQuery is wrong or using jQuery to wire stuff together is wrong. But when you move together from some simple three or five line of lines of jQuery into something that's a hundred, a thousand lines of jQuery, you may want to start to think about something else, something that's going to keep you more organized, something like Knockout, something like Riot, something like Vue, anything other than falling to that trap of building larger and larger jQuery based applications where you're just manually wiring all this stuff together. You're lending yourself to having way more bugs and you're running into more issues of trying to manage this, this complexity of all these lines of code when you can use other systems out there that are better designed for what you're trying to do.